Bears beat the Panthers last night That's... in a thriller. Wow. Yay. Congratulations to the Bears. Man. You know, this is not a coincidence anymore. This is becoming a habit, and that is scoring is down. NFL games are averaging a combined 43 points. That's the lowest in any season since 2009. Also, almost 73% uh, of NFL games this season have been the under, compared to 56% last year, 53% the year before that. Scoring is down. Now, these were two bad teams last night. I didn't expect a shootout, but the trend itself the NFL's got a problem here with scoring because they love scoring. They've done everything they can to help offenses. They want points. They want fantasy. They want all of these things, and they're not getting them so far this year. All right, so the Bears win, and the Panthers are bad. Bears aren't much better. Uh, the draft position. So the Bears, they want the Panthers to keep losing because they have the Panthers' number one pick. But the Bears kind of need to keep losing as well. So they still get a top five draft pick. Where do, where do they stand now? They have the number one pick? Right now, the Bears have the number one pick of the draft from Carolina. Okay. Even though uh, the Arizona Cardinals are one and eight, it's based on strength of schedule. And right now, Chicago has Carolina's pick, the number one pick of the draft. Arizona's second. The New York Giants are third, and they're going into a weekend where they're favored to lose by 17 and a half points. <laughs> so they're helping their cause. The Patriots, and then the Bears have the fifth pick in the draft as of right now. I, was, I, I said this a while ago when the Spurs got Victor Wambayama, that Greg Popovich got a lifeline. Because if Popovich doesn't get Victor Wambayama, does he stay coaching? An average team, a bad team, if they had the fourth pick? But you get Victor Wambayama. And I said at the time, can Bill Belichick get his Victor Wambayama? If they keep losing, is there a chance? They have the fourth pick right now. I mean, you're not going to get Caleb Williams. Probably not getting Drake May. You may get Michael Penix Jr. or Bo Nix. That's not your Victor Wambayama. And therefore, is that something where... And there's so much speculation now based off kind of a report in the Boston Globe by Ben Bolin, who covers the Patriots, that, you know, if they come back from Germany, they've lost to the Colts, there's a chance maybe Belichick is fired. Okay, I mean, that's not a report. It's just, ah, you know, this could happen. Um, I don't think that they would do that to Belichick midseason. I, I just think you have to, out of respect, you can't do that to him. Do I think Belichick's back next year? I don't. Do I think, is he going to be with another franchise? Now they're talking about, well, what about the Bears? What about Belichick to the Bears? I go, okay. Well, didn't we have Lincoln Riley with the Bears and Caleb Williams and now Jim Harbaugh with the Bears and now it's... Bill Belichick, everybody's speculating. I, I had an uh, NFL source say to me, and source works in the NFL home office. He goes, hey, uh, don't rule out Belichick and the Chargers. And I go, okay. Like, I don't see that happening. But, but that's, a, that's an opinion from somebody. That's not information, although I didn't think it was. And like I said, what's this based on? And he says, just a hunch. And I go, well, wait a minute. What about Washington? If, if I'm that new owner, Ron Rivera is probably not going to be brought back. Do you bring Belichick in to run the commanders? I, I said, that seems more plausible than to see him out on the West Coast. Uh, I just can't see that happening. Although he would have his quarterback, but I don't see that happening. The Bears, I don't see that happening either. Maybe Washington. But I don't think he's going to be fired midseason. Yeah, Paul. Colts at Patriots from Frankfurt, 9.30 a.m. Eastern on Sunday morning. Mm. Stand alone. Mm. Could Bill be fired by uh, 1.30 Eastern? Believe him on the tarmac. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Todd. The putting it out there speculation game is a win-win for any report, if you think about it, because if you're right, you were the first one to say something that outlandish. And if it doesn't happen, it's just a report. It's just, not a report. I was yeah. just speculating. I never said this was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Todd. Yeah. Thank you, Todd. Um, Bryce Young, after the game last night, he says, I need to play better. That's the kind of insightful, introspective opinion that I need. You know? I need to play better. You know? It's like the coach saying, you know, this is on me. <laughs> okay, thank you, coach. Yes, Mark. I couldn't imagine a press conference being worse than the game. 
<laughs> but it was. <laughs> I have to admit, I watched Iowa women's basketball, and I would flip over to watch the Thursday night game. Smart move. Because I thought, I got to see some scoring. I got to see something. Uh, some athleticism. And uh, Caitlin Clark outscored the Panthers and the Bears last night by a comfortable margin. That would have been a great prop bet. Like over under Caitlin Clark's points to the Bears and the Panthers combined. Because she put up 44 uh, in a win. She had 44 of her team's 80. I didn't think she played a great game. As strange as that's going to sound, she put up 44. And I go, okay. She missed a lot of shots. Quite a football game last night. The uh, Bears beat the Panthers 16-13. First game in which neither team scored an offensive touchdown since week one when the Saints beat the Titans 16-15. to Congratulations. Oh. Stat of the Day brought to you by Panini America, the official trading cards of the Dan Patrick Show. If that game wasn't a standalone game, uh, I wouldn't have watched it. In fact, I didn't really watch it. I was watching uh, Giannis. Giannis went for like 54 last mm -hmm. night. Uh, I watched Caitlin Clark, Iowa, against Virginia Tech last night. And then I'd kind of sneak back in and just see what was going on with the Bears and the Panthers. And not much was happening. If that's a 1 o'clock game on Sunday, you're not even stopping mm -hmm. to watch. I mean, you might be curious if there's any offense, uh, how Bryce Young looks. And I, I, it's too early to designate how good we think he's going to be or how much of a bust he's going to be because we're trying to compare him to C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud mm -hmm. is just ahead of the game and maybe has better weapons, maybe a better team. I don't know if Bryce Young is going to, you know, it's a mystery. I didn't see it. Uh, when I watched in college, although the game against Texas, I thought, okay, that kid's got something there. Yeah. Uh, but I just didn't get, um, wow, that guy is going to take over a team. I, I think he's a complimentary type of quarterback with a really good team. And he might be like Brock Purdy. So you might have more with Brock Purdy because he's on a better team. And if I put Brock Purdy on Carolina and put Bryce Young on San Francisco, not that it works that way, but it does give you an idea of how your opinion can change. Uh, C.J. Stroud is good. I mean, he's been doing it, and it's not that easy, and he's making it look easy. These two are going to be compared the rest of their careers. But I'm not ready to say Bryce Young is a bust because people go, oh, this guy's not, he's not good. His team's not good. How many guys can be great without a great team around them? It's really hard to do. And that's why when we look at a quarterback, and I always bring up Patrick Mahomes, he's in an ideal situation. He took advantage of an ideal situation with coach, wide receivers, uh, defense, and he's the best player in the NFL. But if he was on Carolina, we wouldn't be talking about Patrick Mahomes. You just wouldn't because he wouldn't be able to create these plays. So that's why when it comes to, oh, I'm, I got my opinion on Bryce Young and he's going to be a bust. I don't know that. I mean, I don't know if C.J. Stroud's going to be a star. He's certainly acting like it. He's played like it. But this is a long process here. And maybe Carolina gets it right. Maybe. But they're not a good team. They're not going to be a good team for a while. They don't have their number one pick. That's going to the Bears. Might be the number one overall pick. Uh, DJ Moore, you traded him away. You watch that team. I mean, there's nothing around Bryce Young in, in fairness to him. And Frank Reich, uh, you know, former uh, quarterback in the NFL, you would think that he would be able to create some things for him. Uh, here is uh, Frank Reich talking about Bryce Young. He made a couple key fourth down conversions, you know, made some good plays in the clutch um, to kind of keep us in it and give us a chance at the end. I thought he did some good things today. I really did. Um, you know, we have to be better. It's so easy to put it all on the quarterback, and that's it's just not the case. We all have to be better. And we're expecting Bryce Young from Alabama. Well, Alabama had pros on that team. Carolina does not have all pros on that team. Certainly not the skill position. 